Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. Today we will look at a deeply intimate issue. Our physical appearance, the way we look. Who hasn't stood in front of the mirror and wished they had different hair, different eyes, different ears, a different appearance, different complexion, a different body, and so on? We continuously compare our attractiveness with others all the time. Are you ready to find out why people look the way they look? Originally, we all were beautiful, perfect sons and daughters of God who were created in His image. We were all looking fabulously. But with our self-will, we soon began to make some far-reaching changes because we are all creators or artists, whether we are aware of it or not. Every day, we are unceasingly creating, sculpturing and fine-tuning our own physical appearance, the way we look. We do this with the brush strokes of our feelings, sensations, thoughts, words and actions, our passions, longings, desires and the like. In the end, it is always our character that marks and chisels our physical body, our appearance. This explains why no two people are looking alike. It is not by chance that a person is tall or short, has brown hair or black hair, whether we have full hair or thin hair, a long nose or a short nose, what kind of shape our ears have, the colors of our eyes, the type of wrinkles and markings in our skin, the shape of our face is not by chance. The way we carry ourselves, the way we move or speak, absolutely everything is our self-portrait created by ourselves. Every day we adjust our appearance a little. Just by looking into the mirror we can see when we are happy or depressed, hateful or envious. Through this we directly experience our character portrait, which is new every day, depending on the situation that the day brings and also on our daily way of feeling, thinking, speaking and acting. That is our daily new programming. We move and behave according to our markings. But most of our character traits that mark us today have been entered by us into our soul and through this into our genes in previous incarnations. How did this happen? Let us take a closer look. Let's pick a real bad case scenario to make it very clear. Here we are in a past incarnation, past lifetime. Things are not going well in our life and we blame everyone around us for all the bad stuff that happens to us. We become more and more egoistic and self-centered and with that lonelier and lonelier. It's all about me, me, me and in the end we become a real grumpy person and that shows in our face, body posture and in our whole appearance. So what does it mean if grumpiness is our major soul frequency when we die? It simply means that it is possible that we may be attracted to similar grumpy souls in the spiritual purification spheres. Like attracts like. Imagine what fun that will be. We know that spiritual growth is very slow in these realms. Therefore, we eventually may want to incarnate again, return to the earth school to speed up our development. As we will be carrying many of our old character traits and programs from past lives into this new life, guess to what kind of parents we might be attracted to in our new life. Yes, parents who are also struggling with grumpiness, maybe depressions or loneliness. So by being born to them, we get their genes, some of their looks, their behavior patterns, because they perfectly correspond with our own. Our self-programming from our past does not only affect our character, but also affects the smallest components of our body. The size of our limbs, the way our shoulder is straight or sloping, whether our torso is large or delicate, whether we walk upright or bent over. Yes, even the size of our shoes is a result of our programming. Every skin pigment, every pimple, every dark spot wants to tell us something. So do our teeth and fingernails. Everything, absolutely everything, is our own personal expression. Yes, even the forms and colors of the clothes we choose, the shape of our shoes, the furnishing of our home and how we live in it, the way we sit in a chair or lie in our bed corresponds to our programming, our tastes and habits, which food we eat and how we eat it or prepare it. Everything but everything is the imprinting we made and no one else. 
So here we are now again with our old programs and character traits, ready to blame once again our parents, our background or whoever for our total unhappiness and loneliness. This here is a very common cycle that unfortunately too many souls are going through from lifetime to lifetime, like in a stupor, repeating the identical behavior patterns often in the same family settings over and over again without any self-recognition or the intention to change it. As a result, each time our appearance reflects more and more our persistent programming. How can this be stopped? We can totally change it once we move away from our self-centeredness, when we begin to reflect on our life, when we take responsibility and acknowledge that we are the sole creator of our misery or grumpiness. No one else did it to us. When we then go within and ask for guidance and help, we see that all of heaven has patiently been waiting for us for this moment to make the first step. We then discover that we have never ever been alone. God and his kingdom are in us and so are the transforming powers of the Christ spark in our heart region that can transform all negativity into positive energies. This includes our grumpiness. And our guardian spirit is by our side to help us on our way to freedom. All the power is in us. All we are asked is to surrender our egoic will to the will of God. Then we move away from self-centeredness to loving and forgiving. By fulfilling the Sermon on the Mount and the Golden Rule, our life will drastically turn around. We begin to forgive everyone, ask for forgiveness and no longer do the selfish and loving things. Suddenly, we are no longer victims but victorious. And that will show our life turns around. That changes our soul and with that our body, our face and our entire attractiveness. Can we see that this is much, much better than Botox? <laughs> Because Botox and facelifts wear off after a short while. But bringing our soul finally into a higher vibration can last forever. William Shakespeare was right when he said, Our bodies are our gardens, our wills are our gardeners. Therefore, changing our character begins with the practice of being of good will to all. What helps us with this is the spiritual principle that says, What you do not want others to do to you, do not do it to others either. There is one further positive aspect that happens when we consciously change our programming. By changing toward the good, we learn to look deeper. People can blind and deceive us only as long as we blind and deceive ourselves. Once we developed an upright character, we are often able to look into the hidden aspects of our fellow people and see them as they really are. We may well see the faults and weaknesses of our fellow people, but we do not judge or condemn them. In all my short videos, I'm sharing material that I found helpful on my own personal mystical path. The material for this video is no exception. It comes from a book which has recently been translated into English. It's called Me, 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 The Spider in the Web by Gabriele. And it has a fascinating subtitle, The Law of Correspondence and The Law of Projection. Some of the chapters in the book are The Law of Attraction, the law of sowing and reaping, the various levels of consciousness, did humans descend from apes, telepathy, addictions, how to detect deception by other people, gene manipulation, how to communicate with God and many, many more. If you're interested, I'll put a link to this book under this video. Just click on it. And if you wish, please subscribe and we will meet again in the next video. Thank you for watching.